We've uh, we wrote out the equation for a static equi equilibrium, and I just now just solved with the neutral axis location was based on on this equilibrium, and it's 186.43. So I, I rewrote the um, the diagram uh, uh, onto here and uh, and the 186.43 location. Now we can solve for the strains and see if the uh, the strains in the steel. Uh, did not yield as we originally assumed in, in the uh, calculation. So let's uh, let's do that right now. Then 0 0.003 times That's point oh oh one four seven, and then the strain in the bottom steel. Okay. So in both cases, the strain is below 0 0.002. Uh, the uh, yield strain is 0 0.02, and anything uh, above 0 0.002 or or at 0 0.002 would have a stress of uh, 400 MPa. But if it's below 0.02, then it's a linear elastic uh, stress distribution. And then once you get to uh, 400 MPa, it caps off. It can't go any higher than that. So we were correct in our assumption because these are both less than 0.002. All right, so we can continue and calculate what the forces are in the masonry and the steel. So it's referring back to, to the example 3.1. Uh, the force in the masonry was this equation here, and this is what we found to be 1190C. So 1190 times C, and we'll say it equals 1190 times 186.43. So that was just uh, 1190 times uh, 186.43. That's 222 kilonewtons. And then the force in the steel prime, this this force here, is uh, phi of the steel, area of the steel, F yield. But in our case, it didn't yield. So that's not correct. It's going to be strain in the steel prime times E of the steel. So it's going to be 0 0.85 times the area of the top steel, which is 500 millimeters each, so there's 2,000 millimeters, times the strain of the steel, 0 0.0147, times 200,000. That comes out to be 250 kilonewtons, and uh, the strain in this bottom steel is in tension. And again, it didn't yield; it did not yield. So you have to use the strain in the steel times the E of the steel. The bottom area of steel is 2,500 millimeters square a thousand, and the strain is 0.0175. comes up to be 298 and that's minus 
And uh, the P factor on the section was, uh, let me see, it was 175 kilonewtons was the acting load. So we can check uh, if we add these up. These should equal 175. It should balance 222, 250, minus 298, 174, which is approximately uh, p factor. So it does balance. So right now, up until now, all our assumptions are, are correct. Now we can just uh, find lever arms. So these are the forces, and we could take a lever arm, and then determine a moment resistance. And the the thing to remember now is the moment should always be taken about the point of zero uh, of of zero bending, which in this section here is it's symmetric, so it's right there at the midpoint. And uh, if it's a, if it's under moment without without any axial, you can take uh, the location. You can take moments about any point, but uh, in this case here, uh, when we have once we introduce axial force, you must always take it about the point of zero uh, bending. So our lever arm is going to be always at 390 over 2, basically. So 390 over 2 uh, minus A over 2. So the, the A is the, uh, is the stress block, A, which is right here. So the A is uh, going to be 186.43 times... 0.8149 millimeters. So that's the the height of the stress block. So half the height of the stress block uh, is where the force occurs. 149 over 2. So 222 times 390 times 0.5 minus 149 times 0.5. That's uh, 26.8 kilonewton meters. And then we could do the same for the compressive steel. 390 over 2 gives us this distance, minus 95. Minus 95. 250 times 390 over 2 minus 95. And that's 25 kilonewtons, kilonewton meters. And then the bottom steel, 390 over 2 minus 390 over 2 mi minus 95 gives us this distance. So there's 298, 298 times 390 over 2 minus 95. 29.8 kilonewton meters. So if we add these up, that's going to be our moment resistance. Twenty-five, twenty-nine point eight. So eighty-one point six kilonewton meters. But always remember that point when you take your moments, take them about here. Uh, about the wherever the point of zero uh, bending is, N not not the neutral axis location. So I mean, the point where uh, if you if you put an axial load on the section, you will not have any strain gradient or any stress gradient. And in this case here, it's half half of the section because it's a uh, it's symmetrical. Now uh, then the next tutorial what we'll do is um, add some height to this section, give it maybe call it six six meters high, and then we can amplify the moments and then check to see if the capacity is adequate. So that's enough uh, for today, and we'll meet up uh, in the next tutorial. Great.